Hey, how's everyone doing? This is Oz with Oz Mechanics, and on today's video, I got this 2009 Kia Spectra right behind me. So the issue with this Kia Spectra, customer was complaining that the lights on the instrument cluster aren't working. So you can just imagine trying to drive late at night and really can't see anything on the cluster. Can't even see how fast you're going. So how about in today's video, we try to figure out this issue and give the vehicle back to the customer. so let's see if we can recreate this customer complaint so we have the key right here let's put that sucker in and as you can see we have all these other lights right here but if we try to turn it on the actual lights for the instrument cluster it is still dark we can see outside we have our headlights so that's working but in here it's not working and we have our gate our little dial right here that we can move and we're not getting anything right here so customer just wants to figure out what's going on right here but let me show you something that we found out customer brought this up and it's kind of concerning so let's go down here where the fuses are at and i'm going to show you what we found out all right so these are our fuses right here and let me show you one of them this is the housing of the fuse it is all melted and I don't think I've ever seen something like this because when I would pull some of the fuses out, this is how they came out. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if they put some of these little cheap fuses in here, but I went ahead and changed them all out. We can actually see right here, this, this fuse right here, which was a 30 amp a green one, actually melted and start, and that, that that melted down here i'm sorry i, I wish i could, could have showed you a picture of that that was kind of crazy some were just missing the the little piece like this the little plastic covering and basically all you would see was this right there and i went ahead replaced all these and put original ones and i went to the front of the vehicle because i didn't know if this was like uh kia one but i went to the front of the vehicle and i had these original ones that you always see on all the other vehicles but yeah these just i don't know they're maybe harbor freight ones or some ebay ones but i'm telling you when i would try to pull them and extract them you would they would come out like this but that wasn't the repair so now after that i was like let's pull out the camera and let's see what we find out so what I want to do, I want to get a wiring diagram and start looking at the what's feeding this and trying to figure out exactly what's going on so we can fix up this problem. All right, so right now we are on Mitchell Pro Demand and we are on the instrument cluster circuit right here. So as we can see right here, there's no dotted line. So this is going to be showing the whole instrument cluster. And what we want to look for is those lights right there. What is going to be feeding into those lights? And if we go down here, let's see if we find any lights. All right, so we have one light here, and that's the immobilizer indicator. And let's go a little bit lower. The mill indicator. And then we have the airbag indicator. So this is not actually showing us what is lighting up the cluster. This is not going to help us out anything right here because it's not showing us where the lights uh, lights are at. Let's see if we can find something else right here. Let's check headlights. So if we turn on the headlights, that's when we're going to have our lighting inside. Let's see if we have anything with that. We have right here the in instrument cluster, but that's our uh, high beam indicator and the fog indicator. And we didn't actually see that when we looked at the instrument cluster. So remember how I was telling you? So when you have right here, this dashed lines right here, that's kind of stating us that this is not the whole system. But when we went to the instrument cluster, it was a full line. So that should have everything in there, but it's not. So as you can see, this is not dashed. This is just a, uh, a solid line, so it should have everything in here. But 
as you can see it only shows airbag all pressure indicator and uh, emo indicator and they didn't show the high beam so now we have to look a little bit further but we can see right here that we have a couple of fuses that feed our actual in instrument cluster so we have this instrument cluster 10 amp fuse so it feeds two positives we have this room fuse that as well feeds here and that should be pretty much it so what I want to do first, let's just check out these fuses because if we can see right here, it says the le uh, under left side dash. That's where I replaced the fuses and something happened there. So what we can do, we can start off and check these out and see if we find anything. So let's go back to the vehicle, look for this cluster and this room fuse and see if we find anything. All right, so we're right here where the fuses are at. And if we look at our wiring diagram, we have cluster, which is a 10 amp fuse and then room, which is a 15 amp fuse. So room is right there, and then what we're going to have is that cluster, so it's going to be over here. This cluster is a 10 amp fuse, and when we kind of changed them out, I basically took, if I took a 25, put a 25, same thing, 10, 10, 10. This is a 15, and we should have a 10 amp one. But let's check this out, and to verify everything's good, we just got to put the key on the on position. And make sure that we are grounded good. This is going to be the cluster fuse. All right, nice and bright. Nice and bright. Now we're going to check out the room fuse. That's nice and bright. And that's nice and bright. All right, cool. So those are the fuses that are going to the instrument cluster. And what's going on? Everything else is working, it's just the lights. All right, so I did find something interesting. So if we go to interior lights right here, check this out right here. We start getting to this, and then I see, lo and behold, this right here. Instrument cluster light. So we can see that this is what is illuminating this. Now we can see that this circuit right here, so this wire right here, is feeding all these other lights right here. So hazard switch, AC control module, audio, digital clock, trip, all these are basically feeding this. So let's just say that this 10 amp fuse should go over here and then it's gonna feed that, which gives power to all this. So to bypass all this right here, we can literally go back to our instrument cluster or we can just look at one of these right here and this also looks at these right here so a pretty quick thing to do we got this lighter power window main switch so let's go to our power window power window main switch and if we can see that it's lighting up there that's going to be a clear indication other than that what we're going to do next after that we're going to go to this connector seven blue and black so we gotta go to the connector that goes to the instrument cluster and this should be our power and then after that this is going to be our ground so it goes through here and through there and if we see this right here this is right here real stat so this is our control real stat most likely what that's going to be that's going to be our little control on the side the one that you uh bring it down and up that should be this part right here. So that's gonna be our rheostat. So let's verify real quick. Go look at our power window switch. Make sure that's illuminated whenever we turn, uh, whenever we turn it to the on position. We gotta turn our headlight switch to the on position and this should turn everything on. If that's working, then let's verify this blue and black that we have voltage there. And then after that, we have to verify that we have a ground. So let's go, to the, let's go back to the vehicle and verify that all these are working. All right, so we're inside the vehicle, and what we're going to do, we're just going to turn this to the on position, basically like turning on our headlights, and we're going to see if that lights this up. So we're going to go ahead, turn it on. It's working. So remember, 
if we look right here that feeds it right there power run power window switch so that feeds those bulbs right there so now what we need to do is find this connector right here it's going to be a uh, connector seven blue and black and we just got to verify where that's at i still have the cluster out so luckily we took that out and let's test that out real quick and see what we find out all right i'm just going to pull out this wiring diagram right here so if we go right here we see connector seven uh, blue and black interior light system so let's check this out right here one two three four five six seven so we do have a blue bam oh you can see that there's a little black strip right there all right so i have my test light right here and i am grounded out to this bolt back here you can see that now what we're going to do we're going to switch this over and verify if it turns on there you go so now we know that we have power there now we got to see what's going on with the ground so remember we're going to be looking at this right here so what we got to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to see if we have ground coming out to that wire now we just got to figure out which one it is again and then we'll look at that all right so if we look back at this we already checked out this blue and black that's a connector seven now the ground side coming from the rheostat is connector six a blue and orange and that's right next to it if i'm not mistaken so we look right here we have connector seven blue and black and next to it is blue uh blue and orange so i got my power probe right here as we can see let's just switch this to the on position let's see what happens all right that got kind of loud right there but that is power we should be having ground and we're getting power so now if we go back over here so black blue orange and blue black and if we go back here there black blue orange and blue black right here so let's start off looking at the ground this is going to be a black wire so we have our power probe right here we're going to verify what we got all right so we have ground there and our blue and uh black right here let's check this out that's our power and then this one right here should be our ground as you can see we have power there let's give it a little ground and see if this turns on look at that there you go all right so now that's working so our issue is going to be somewhere right here let's try to see if this is going to be a connector issue so let me get my uh toolkit from aes wave and we're going to do a pin drag a drag test right here and we're going to verify if this just depends or do we have a problem inside here and we just got to replace this whole piece in in total all right so this is one of my favorite toolkits right here i will put a link down below too on the description so where you can get this and uh all right we gotta see what we have right here with this one as you can see that's a good fit so it's not gonna be that as well this is a nice good fit and we have this one and what i'm doing is i'm just kind of putting it in there and then i'm trying to pull out if this was not good once we put it right in there it'll just kind of be loose but this like i said as soon as i push it in there I can tug and it has some resistance so what we're gonna do we're gonna replace this right here and then we're gonna retest it and verify verify everything's good so most likely it just has like some loose contacts inside so let me see if I can even find this and then we'll change it out all right so we have some good news and bad news so I called the dealership and guess what these are on back order so we couldn't get a hold of a brand new one but I went to a local junkyard and got me one of these right here. Luckily, I found two vehicles right there. But if you can see the difference, one is gray and one is tannish. So we're going to check this out. I brought two because I think these, are, these have an issue. So what we're going to do, we're going to try this gray one first. Because this is the color of the, the actual vehicle right here. And I want to make sure that she is good. 
All right, look at that. She did turn green. Let's bring it down. There you go. Now let's kind of move this. Uh, all right, this is not good right here. So let's try this other one and let's see what happens when we try this one out. And that's why we brought two. All right, she's working. Now let's kind of move this around. <laughs> oh, there you go. This is what it is. Look, I'm not too excited about this, but at least this is working. And like I said, we couldn't find aftermarket ones. We couldn't get one from the dealership. But the good thing is that the head right here can be switched out. So that's what we're going to do. So there you go. That's going to be our fix for our vehicle. If you do like this video, please put a big thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that little notification bell to get our brand new videos coming out from Miles Mechanics. Y'all take care. Y'all have a nice day.